All right, quantum computing and generative AI. You hear these terms everywhere, right? And yeah, on their own, they're already total game changers. But what happens when you smash them together? Is this the next big tech revolution we've all been waiting for? Or, you know, is the hype just getting a little out of control? Well, that's what we're here to figure out. Let's dive in and really separate the science from the sci-fi. See that the imagination of nature is far, far greater than the imagination of man. I mean, what a line, right? That's from the legendary physicist Richard Feynman, and he was talking about the quantum world, this absolutely mind-bending place where the rules of our everyday reality just, well, they don't apply. We're talking about things like superposition and entanglement. It's truly wild stuff. And that quote really brings us to the big question, doesn't it? How much of this is a revolution we can actually use today versus how much is still just imagination? So in this explainer, we're going to cut right through all the noise. We'll figure out what's really working right now, what's just a cool idea for the future, and where the actual value is hiding when you bring these two giants together. So here's our game plan. We'll kick things off with today's reality for both technologies. Then we'll see how they can actually work together. We'll also tackle the big hurdles and risks. No sugarcoating here. After that, we'll look at some startups already building this future. And finally, we'll peek over the horizon to see what's coming next. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with today's reality. And honestly, this is the most important place to start because we have to be super clear about one thing. We are talking about two very different technologies at totally different points in their life cycle. And if you get that, everything else is going to make a lot more sense. Okay, so let's just lay it all out. Generative AI, it's here, it's now, it's already in production, and it's making companies money. Quantum computing, well, it's a completely different story. It's still really in its early experimental stages. So why all the hype? Because it works in a fundamentally different way. You know how regular computers use bits that are either a zero or a one? Well, quantum bits, or qubits, can be both at the same time, thanks to this crazy thing called superposition. This lets them check out a massive number of possibilities all at once. That makes them unbelievably powerful for certain types of super complex problems. But, and this is key, they're not something you can just use for any old task. And if you want a perfect real world example, just look at finance. Generative AI is already all over the place. I'm talking about firms automating tedious reports, spitting out risk summaries in seconds, and building these custom co-pilots that get the unique lingo of their business. This isn't some pie in the sky promise for five years from now. This is happening today, and it's delivering real, measurable results. Quantum's role in finance, on the other hand, is way more focused. We're seeing some really interesting early wins, especially from something called quantum annealers. They're being used for these incredibly tough optimization problems, like trying to pick the absolute best portfolio out of millions of possibilities. But the example you really need to know about is this pilot from HSBC. They used a hybrid system, a mix of classical and quantum computing, and got a real measurable edge in predicting bond trades. And that right there is the key. For now, the realistic path for quantum isn't about replacing what we have. It's about being a super-powered specialist for very specific jobs. Okay, so if they're so different, how in the world do they actually work together? Well, this is where things get really cool. The goal isn't for one to replace the other. It's about building a bridge, creating a workflow that's way smarter than what either of them could do on their own. The whole thing hinges on this idea of a hybrid pipeline. And honestly, the best way to think about it is like this. Your normal classical computer is the project manager. It's running the show, doing, you know, 95% of the heavy lifting. But then it hits a wall. A problem that's just a total beast. A ridiculously complex puzzle it just can't solve. So what does it do? It calls in the specialist, the quantum computer, to come in and just nail that one impossible piece of the puzzle. And check this out. Here's exactly how that plays out in the real world. Step one, a financial analyst just describes what they want to do in plain English. No complex code. Step two, the Gen AI acts as the ultimate translator. It takes that plain English and turns it into the super specific mathematical language, a Kubo, that the quantum computer needs. Step three, the quantum computer gets to work, does its thing, and solves that gnarly optimization problem. And finally, step four, the Gen AI steps back in and translates the quantum computer's dense, math-heavy answer back into a clear, human-readable strategy you can actually use. It's a perfect handshake between the two. All right, I know that sounds absolutely incredible, but we got to pump the brakes for a second. Let's get real. Building this future is not going to be a walk in the park. There are some major hurdles, technical, financial, and even security-related, that we absolutely have to face. First, the quantum hardware. 
Look, the qubits we have today are still pretty limited. They're noisy, they're unstable, and they don't stay quantum for very long. So their advantage is really restricted to specific problems. Then you have the Gen AI risks, which I'm sure you've heard about. These models can just make stuff up, hallucinate. They can leak sensitive data, and they can be biased. And then you try to combine them. These hybrid systems are incredibly complex to build and debug, not to mention they can be crazy expensive. You need a rock-solid business case to justify all that. And then there's this, the long-term security nightmare. It's called Harvest Now, Decrypt Later. And it is a huge deal. The basic idea is that bad actors can steal our encrypted data right now, today, and just sit on it. They'll just store it, waiting for the day when a quantum computer is powerful enough to crack today's encryption like it's nothing. And suddenly, all those secrets are wide open. That's why the race for quantum-safe cryptography is so incredibly urgent. And this quote from Robbie Menon just nails the core problem, the black box syndrome. Think about it. For both of these technologies, if we can't understand why they gave us a certain answer, how can we possibly trust it, especially in high-stakes fields like finance or medicine? This isn't just a tech problem. It's a trust problem. And it's a huge barrier to getting these things adopted. So, yeah, lots of challenges. I get it. You might be thinking this is all just a cool thought experiment. But here's the thing. The potential payoff is just too massive to ignore. And there are some seriously brilliant startups out there right now who are in the trenches, turning all this theory into reality. For example, take a company called Genmat. They're literally using this quantum plus AI combo to discover brand new materials. I mean, imagine being able to design a solar panel that's twice as efficient or a stronger, lighter alloy for airplanes. That's the kind of world-changing stuff they're working on. Or look at Quantumatic, which is using quantum-powered algorithms to solve insane business optimization problems. And Ergo Quantum is building the crucial software that actually lets these hybrid systems talk to each other. So no, this is not science fiction. These are real companies building real products today. All right, so let's bring it all home. We've looked at what's real today, we've seen the incredible promise for tomorrow, and we've been honest about the big roadblocks. So what's the big picture? What should we be thinking about as we look ahead? I love this analogy because it captures the difference perfectly. Imagine you have a massive mountain range and you need to find the absolute lowest point, the deepest valley. A classical computer is like a hiker. It has to walk down one hill, then climb all the way up the next one, and so on, hoping it eventually stumbles upon the lowest spot. A quantum computer, though, it doesn't have to climb. In theory, it can just tunnel straight through the mountains to find the answer instantly. The potential isn't just a little better. It's exponentially, fundamentally different. The big question is just how long is it going to take us to build that tunnel? And really, that's the ultimate question we're left with, isn't it? Is this big convergence of quantum and AI just going to be a slow evolution, giving us some cool, specialized new tools? Or... Are we actually witnessing the dawn of a completely new computational species? A new way to think, to compute, to discover that could completely rewrite the rulebook on what's even possible? We don't know the answer yet, but it's going to be fascinating to find out.